What to wear, what to wear. What to wear when I hike over there. What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Today I wanna to be talking about hiking footwear and what some of my favorites are and what you should be wearing on your hiking and backpacking trips. If you wanna know what you should be wearing for your hiking trips, well, this video is for you. Stick around because I'm breaking it all down right now. I think sometimes people don't really give it proper credit for the importance level that the right footwear has on your hiking and backpacking trips. Having the right footwear can make a massive difference in the enjoyment and your foot comfort for a given hike. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what I recommend. I've been testing out a huge amount of gear. As you can see, I have a wall of footwear. So this is actually something I'm passionate about. Very commonly on the market, you will, you will find Gore-Tex hiking boots. Now, they're not always actually Gore-Tex brand. This one is, you know, Gore-Tex brand, but sometimes they are, you know, Keen has their Keen Dry. Um, a lot of these brands have their kind of their own spin on Gore-Tex. But what you're essentially looking for is if it's waterproof. So with a boot like this, being that it's Gore-Tex or waterproof, these are not breathable. So the moisture, which is great, you wanna keep the moisture out. If you're hiking through sloppy mud or snow or it's raining, you wanna keep your feet dry. And so this is the time to use these types of shoes. You want Gore-Tex shoes. However, if you are gonna be hiking in hotter, warmer weather conditions or drier conditions, you do not want Gore-Tex shoes. You, do, you want breathability because what happens is your feet will produce the moisture. They will sweat and you want that to be able to escape. So moisture has a greater ability to escape out of this shoe than this boot, even though they're both Gore-Tex, but this one will beat all three of these because this is really just, you know, a thin membrane that where moisture can come in and out. As often as I can, I elect to take breathable footwear. I do live in the desert. It's often very dry. So it does depend on where you're gonna be hiking or where you live or where you spend most of your time. So that being said, let's start breaking down the categories and what I recommend from there. These are insulated winter hiking boots. Should you be wearing them this summer? Probably not because they're pretty specialized. But if you are watching this and you're thinking about how to go hiking in cold temperatures or snowy, wet conditions, then having a good pair of winter hiking boots is hugely important and I definitely recommend them. And I use these all winter long and they were some of the best winter boots I've ever used. They are pricey, but they're quality. This is the more like Boy Scout level, full hiking boot, Gore-Tex boot. The thing you probably grew up with, or maybe your dad or your, you know, the, the previous generation of hikers really grew up with this kind of style of boot. They're great. They certainly have their place and I love them, especially if I'm in wet conditions. This was my favorite boot to be wearing in Iceland when I'm hiking where you have highly variable weather, you have cold temperatures. That is an amazing boot to wear. So I really recommend something like those. This is the Super Alp from Aku and they're, they've been super great. So these are the Selveticas from Aku and these have been a favorite of mine. And you can see that all of this material here, it kind of has a shiny, more plasticky look but that is the waterproofing uh, nature of the shoe. And these are very, very comfortable. I can wear them like a slip-on. I've really liked the how they tighten up around my foot. And if you are also kind of in shoulder season and or you're not really sure what to expect, you may encounter wet conditions on the trail, but you like having a little bit more breathability uh, because this low cut, more moisture is gonna come out around your ankles. So this is a great to wear if you're kind of not really sure what you're gonna encounter. In general, when you're making your footwear purchasing decisions, if you're not sure, I would probably err on the side of Gore-Tex just because it gives you a little bit more options for where you can hike comfortably. But if you know 
that you don't need waterproof shoes, then I definitely think as much as you can get away with it, go with the more breathable nature non-Gore-Tex boots or shoes. These are kind of more of like a running shoe slash hiking trail shoe, and but they're not quite full running shoes. And I really like these a lot. So this has become one of my go-to shoes when I'm in drier conditions. I absolutely love these and these are definitely a go-to shoe of mine. The downside of a shoe like this for some people maybe that they don't feel as protected. You know, you have more of your ankle exposed. Some people feel like your ankles are more likely to roll with a, with a shoe like this. I haven't experienced that. I haven't experienced a greater propensity for rolling my ankles with the lower cut. In fact, I kind of think it's the opposite because what tends to happen when I have a higher cut boot like this and I'm hiking, I tend to get a little bit lazier because this extra protection, I can kind of step with less care. And I actually find that I step awkwardly more often in the bigger boots than I do with these where something psychologically happens and I just have a little bit more sense or care with where my feet are going. And I, knock on wood, don't have a problem with rolling my ankles in shoes like this. I don't know about you, you might have more sensitive ankles or uh, your ankle muscles are less strong, in which case maybe you want the full support. But I actually like the freedom and I find fewer injuries happen for me in, or just like tweaked ankles, not like real serious injuries. Uh, happen with with these. So I definitely like these. Before I go any further, I wanna give a quick shout out and a thank you to Mystery Ranch. Mystery Ranch is a sponsor of this hiking series where I am trying to help new hikers gain the information that they need for getting further in their development in hiking and backpacking. Mystery Ranch makes amazing backpacks. They have been long affiliated with hunters, military, firefighters, hikers, and backpackers. They make some of the best backpacks on the market and are some of my favorites. So the Bridger series, again, is one of my favorite backpacks of all time. And if you are looking for a great hiking backpack, make sure that you check out mysteryrange.com. These are a curious shoe, and I do wanna talk about what approach shoes are. So approach shoes are pretty unique. This is from 510, and uh, they are some of my favorite approach shoes. So what is an approach shoe? Well. It is a mixture between a hiking shoe and a climbing shoe. So they have this really nice tacky rubber on the bottom and it's very exceptional, very, very grippy. And it even has kind of like a climbing shoe style edge here. So you can do some light scrambling and climbing in them. Now you wouldn't wanna do a full climb in them because the approach shoe, the name comes from, it's the shoe you wear on the approach to a climb. So they have some nimble nature to them. You can do some light scrambling and climbing. And I actually do like just hiking in approach shoes. I think it's very fun, especially if I'm going hiking in an area where there's like kind of bouldery, scrambly stuff. So I love having these in my repertoire, although they're, you know, kind of a odd sub cousin to the hiking shoe. But I did want to talk about it because maybe some of you are interested in that, but you've never heard of an approach shoe or don't know what it is or why you'd want it. So 510 Adidas makes some great approach shoes and there's others, Scarpa, um, La Sportiva, very popular approach shoe companies out there. Moving our way down the line, we have a running shoe. This is also from Merrill. And these are some pretty schnazzy, high performance looking shoes. Now these are even lighter. These are pretty light, but these are even lighter because if you're running, if you were a trail runner, you really want lightweight shoes to be running on the trail with. And actually, I find that running shoes are some of the best hiking shoes. If you are a through hiker or somebody who really likes lots of miles, then you probably are already hiking in trail runners. Things like ultras um, are very popular. Merrill's very popular. 
but the running shoe is a category of hiking shoe that I actually think the the general market or the newer hiker needs to have some more awareness of because they're some of the best most comfortable foot carrying shoe out there that's great because they're so light they're so nimble they're so breathable you almost never get blisters in them um, which is why i like them so much because they're really made for you know an athlete who's out there running to keep their feet protected so for hikers it actually they're pretty awesome next on my list is another kind of sub cousin of the hiking shoe and that's the water shoe so this is from astral this is the tr1 mesh and this is a practically see-through shoe you might not have if the light was coming from the other direction you'd be able to see through it and what i think these are actually really fun shoes that i wear in wet hikes so if i'm hiking say in a canyon or let's say I'm going into the Narrows of Zion or somewhere where I'm just gonna be constantly in water, in and out, crossing creeks all the time. These are what you wanna wear. So when you are thinking about wet conditions, a lot of times you are thinking about protecting your feet, making sure moisture doesn't get in. But there are certain hikes out there where water is just gonna be a part of the hike and you're not gonna take your, uh, take your foot off you're not going to take your shoes off to cross every creek because you're just constantly in and out so what you want to do is have a shoe that drains water really well and this is that shoe so when you are plunging in knee deep into the water and then you go on to dry ground for a few you know a feet or a quarter mile and then you're back in you want water that you want a shoe that will drain that water as quickly as possible so this is what I wear when I'm in canyon country and when I'm going to be hiking in, in and out of rivers. So it gives me the foot protection, the toe protection that's better than a sandal, but it gives me the draining ability and they're very lightweight shoes, very comfortable shoes. So when they get wet, they don't hold a bunch of water. Let's say I was going to be doing a trip and I had these shoes similar in size and nature but if i'm going in and out of water in this this will weigh three or four pounds because the water is just going to sit in there and it won't get out of the shoe whereas in this as soon as you step out of the water that water immediately drains out and your feet are back to have being lightweight and a lot more comfortable and these are a little bit cheaper these are more closer to a hundred the hundred dollar range and you know, a lot of these shoes are closer to $200, probably 180 and kind of getting a little bit cheaper as we come down the line here. And last, we have the hiking sandal. So I used to use Chacos exclusively. However, my pair of Chacos that I had died after about 15 years and I have replaced them with the Bedrock Adventure sandal. And these have actually been really solid. I like these a lot. The benefits for a shoe like this or a sandal like this versus the Chaco is that these are way, way, way lighter. These are much closer to a sandal weight while still giving you a nice amount of, wouldn't exactly call it support, but you feel like the sandal will actually stay on your foot as opposed to a flip-flop where that thing is unreliable. These are actually really fun. And I, and I do like to wear these a lot, especially in really warm climates, uh, hiking in the desert, but you have to be careful. Obviously your, your toes are exposed. You have more probability for kicking a cactus, kicking a rock, having a foot injury and things like that. So you do have to be careful with when you choose to use these. And I personally, if I'm ever going for a hike that's longer than five miles, I rule out hiking sandals because to me, I'm more likely to get blisters and that, you know, these, these can really wear on your skin more than these, probably just because you're wearing socks with them. But if I'm hiking for, you know, one to four miles in a, in a climate where a sandal is appropriate, I love wearing these. These are great. And these do make great camp shoes as well because they're light enough. So if I'm on a backpacking trip and I have a big pair of boots 
that I'm wearing. And at the end of the day, when I get to camp, I really want something to change into that's light. I bring a pair of hiking sandals as well. And that also gives me the ability to wear these not only around camp, but let's say I blow out a shoelace or I have a problem and I need to change. Um, I have something else that I can hike in that's, that's a backup. So that's my rundown of this spectrum of hiking footwear for your backpacking and hiking trips. I hope this was helpful. Um, and just in case you're curious, my two favorites are the Gore-Tex Selveticas from Aku and these unknown Merrells and the Trail Runners also from Merrell. So th those are my go-tos that I wear more than anything else out there. Um, but everything else has its place. So if you have any questions about hiking footwear, please hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to help you out and uh, give you some information. That's what this channel is all about, educating and inspiring and getting people out there safely, as inexpensively as possible and having fun doing it. That's it for me. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later, everybody.